I'm going to start with um, a, a test suite page. Uh, this is running locally on uh, my machine. This is Fitness Wiki. And uh, it has, like, a, like any test suite, it has uh, some setup and teardown functionality. And uh, it has the tests, which are denoted with a plus icon. I'm not sure if you guys can see that. It's kind of blurry. And uh, some test case, a very brief description of the test case, which tells you what this test does. So if we click on um, a test case, we can see uh, the story, as Ray mentioned. And uh, the story is using some of the custom grammar that we have written for uh, this particular website. You can also see here that we automatically include some setup functionality, which in our case just opens up the um, index page. And a uh, couple things to note about the custom grammar. There are several different types of um, custom statements, if you will, that we can have in fitness. Uh, the uh, signing in with a username and password is an action which will do a specific task. There's also, uh, at the end of the test, we have uh, something that's called a uh, validation where we verify that the album that we created contains specific picture. And uh, this line will be color coded once the test executes with either green or red based on whether the test passed or failed. There's also some uh, informative statements which uh, are great for debugging, uh, such as showing value of uh, specific cookies. And uh, you know, this is fantastic for debugging. When the test executes, you'll just see uh, the cookie values printed right next to it. So uh, to see what this actually looks like behind the scenes, we, we can click the edit button. And uh, this is the test case. It's using you know, pretty much standard wiki markup language. And uh, we can add uh, comments here with the uh, bangs. So with that, let's try running one. So I'm going to start the grid locally on my machine. And uh, to run the test, I just click the uh, test button. And you can see uh, the fitness page changing. Uh, the first line is uh, basically the uh, Java class name of the fixture that we created. And uh, here you can see you know, the Selenium remote control, all the standard stuff that I'm sure you've all seen a, a million times. <laughs> but uh, the cool thing about fitness is that this page is uploaded, I mean updated as you go along. And you can watch the progress. And uh, here are our cookie values. You know, it can be obviously whatever cookies are applicable for your situation. It can be other data also as applicable to the particular test. We, and here we go, we're done. So the album contains picture is green uh, because we've practiced so many times that it's not gonna fail. And uh, at the top, you now see uh, the green line saying, you know, we ran 16 assertions, they all passed, so the test has passed. Um, another cool thing about fitness is that we, we have also integrated it with the uh, source on demand. So uh, to, uh, to show you this functionality, I'm gonna edit the uh, suite setup page, and all I'm gonna do is just uncomment a couple lines and coming out to others. And now I have you know, a different statement here, which basically says start source on demand with a specific browser configuration. And I'm gonna run a very simple test, uh, which uh, will basically delete the cookies and sign me in. And it's gonna verify that you know, the text mat is present there. So to run it, I again click test, and uh, you know, nothing is happening in the remote control. So it's running, I guess, somewhere in this building. <laughs> um, it takes a little slower because it's you know, doing some network stuff. But again, you see the page updating. And uh, it's going to take a few seconds to finish. And you can also expand the uh, setup and teardown also as you go along to see that it's all successful. And uh, here we go. So we're almost done here. And uh, you know, as I'm sure you all know, Source creates job videos uh, for, 
for its uh, for the test, and uh, we now have a link that should take us directly to this job. And here we go. So this is the test that was just executed a few seconds ago, all linked to uh, the fitness test case. So with that, I uh, would like to open it up for any Q&A. My name is Shobna, and I work for Cisco WebEx. Um, we use Bromine a lot, and I want to know like, what is the difference between Bromine and Fitness E. Because Bromine also has those um, mm -hmm. test cases where you can upload, for each and every test case, you can upload your Selenium test, and it can run as a suit, as a project, mm -hmm. and you can do also cron jobbing over there. And it also gets you the browser output. Like it just captures the screenshot for you. Mm -hmm. So how it differs from Is fitness. It open source? It's open source. Then it, it sounds like it might be the same because you probably know a little bit more about it. But it's it. it's not like wiki based. Mm -hmm. It's like a uh, QTP point, like uh, where you have your projects and where you have your all your test requirements mm -hmm. and each and every steps on it, and then you can attach the test script. You know, I don't think we have uh, a lot of experience with Bromine, so I can't comment on similarities and differences. But and uh, it also stores the test results to you, so it can view, watch the test results um, two months before, a year before, right. two seconds right. before, yeah. and it has all, like, you, with single click, you can test it with all the browsers. For those of you interested in knowing how this compares to Bromine, uh, there's a, the fitness.org webpage lays out a couple of tutorials on this. There's a two minute and a one minute tutorial. Gives you a lot of information about this open source tool and then you can compare it with Bromine. Thanks. Thank you. Sir. So the main point that you have is that uh, the multiplier effect comes with non-technical people being able to write tests. I've seen this a lot and I haven't seen it actually in action. It's a promise that never has been fulfilled. You know, I, I have some gray hair too. And, uh, <laughs> and for the longest time, I've stayed away from really recommending to my clients getting too heavily into automation unless they had the technical skill set. This is the first time, between being excited about Selenium and finding a framework that offers a domain-specific language ability, I feel confident we could get a little bit closer to having non-programmers do it. Only because you have more control over the domain-specific language. The challenge remains. Wiki is, too, is, is, is still too difficult for non-technical people, and it's too simple for us. I, I share your concern about, uh, I share your experience with, with using wikis as an editing tool. Not as scary as a full-blown IDE, but it is. I a, think a, this a, is a, also a fairly simple wiki. You know, it's not as feature-rich, I guess, so it makes it simpler. Please. The fitness tests, instead of serving as, uh, will end up serving as both a combination of a testing spec, a testing plan, and a requirements document. And they allow you to get rid of some of the intervening steps. Um, I'm not sure at this point that fitness is the best tool. Uh, I've heard other people recommending other things, um, but uh, it can definitely be used, um, and I've heard of it, and I've seen it used successfully, but not, but more as the center for people to work together, rather than turning it over to non-technical. Yeah, you know, and, and when they when you go to the fitness, uh, read about fitness, they do talk about it as being a collaborative tool. And you know, I forgot that I forgot to mention about the wiki. There is the importing from spreadsheet capability where people execute right by typing their domain specific language into a spreadsheet and then they export it to the uh, or actually read it directly into a fitness page next question Trip. i was just wondering uh could you show the the code of the fixture uh i don't think we're set up at this moment mm. for that that's that's a big chunk of it right that's it's a huge chunk of it yeah oh, okay yeah well <laughs> we could if you want to right after the ah, okay. we could show you you know afterwards yeah. if you want okay um, I have a question about continuous integration. So presumably most build machines are Unix and Linux based and you've got a web-based browser application. So can you recommend any tools for bridging that gap or how does it, um, is it a feature of Selenium remote control? I don't have much experience with the tool that you can send a message that, you know, 
the build is done and it knows to kick off the test suite, or how do you manage that? Sure. So um, I'm actually doing that for one of my clients right now. And uh, you know, fitness can be started from command line. And uh, with that, it can be integrated into pretty much any continuous integration tool. Right? So we're using cruise control at the moment as basically our testing dashboard, right? which has a collection of uh, test targets, if you will, right? which is basically different browser and OS configurations. And all of that is managed through a Selenium grid. And uh, it's all tied into cruise control. Thank you. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you.